welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Becca, I'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist specialising in coloured pencils. So in today's video, I'm gonna be answering the questions that you asked me on Instagram. If you're not already following me on Instagram, then it's at Becca Baron Arts. You can give me a follow on there and keep up to date with all the work that I'm doing. So let's just get straight into it. So for paper, I like to use extra white hot pressed Fabriano Artistico paper. I use that for all of my commissions and most of my wildlife drawings. It's kind of like a really smooth surface, but it has got a really fine grain to it, which means that it can hold a lot of layers, which is good for when you want to draw like realistic kind of style drawings. Um, because to get them to look realistic, you need to add a lot of layers to get that kind of depth. So that's a really good paper to use. I also like to use drafting film, which is kind of the opposite. It's got like no tooth, no grain whatsoever. But the detail that you can achieve with that is like really, really good. I've also tried pastel matte, but a bit on the edge with that. Um, but yeah, I'd probably say the extra white Fabriano Artistico paper hot pressed is my go-to. My go-to colour pencils are predominantly Faber-Castell Polychromos and Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. I think they work really well together because the Luminance pencils are predominantly wax based so they're much softer, they're good for base layers and good for blending, whereas the Polychromos are predominantly oil based so they're really good for kind of holding that really vibrant pigment and getting that detail down. So I started by using just Polychromos um, maybe when I was like 15 when I first started doing commissions um, I only had a couple but then obviously the collection grows as you kind of buy more and more materials and then a couple of years ago I introduced luminance pencils into my pencil set and I think they complement each other really well so now I use them all the time for commissions and my wildlife pieces. So to order a commission you can DM me via Instagram or my Facebook page at Becca Baron Art or you can send an inquiry to my email and I'll get back to you with more information and a link to my website with a step-by-step -step guide, including a photo guide, delivery details and my sizes and prices. Please bear in mind, I'm always booked up around six to seven months in advance, uh, but I'll always let you know when my next availability is. If that timeline works for you, then I can secure your place on my waiting list with a £25 deposit that goes towards your commission. So it depends on the size. Um, the smallest commission size that I offer is six by six inch, which is probably around that size. Probably takes me around like three to four hours. The biggest size that I offer is 16 by 20 inch, which is quite a lot bigger. That can take me up to like 20, 25 hours. Then I've got some of my wildlife pieces like this huge stag, which is the latest original that I've done, which is huge. This took me, it was also a tutorial as well for Patreon, so this probably took me like 30 hours. This is probably the piece that I'm most proud of from this year, probably because of how big it is and um, I included this bit of a background, which I don't usually do. So yeah, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. This is probably one of my favourite pieces that I've ever done. So this um, stag drawing is available as an eight part tutorial over on Patreon, which is my teaching channel. So you can learn how to draw this stag for yourself and I taught you through step by step every single colour and layer and just like the process so you can kind of recreate it yourself. Um, it's also like 30 plus hours of real time video. This is also for sale so if you're interested in purchasing this huge stag drawing which is titled Morning Mist then it's available to purchase through my website shop and my Etsy shop. Patreon is an online teaching platform where you can get exclusive access to content such as in-depth tutorials, which are real-time, um, in-depth, step-by-step tutorials split into parts, so you can draw something from start to finish. There's focus tutorials where I focus on part of the animal or a specific technique. There's materials videos, art business tips, behind the scenes look at my work, and I also offer one-to-one -one feedback or critique. So to join my Patreon, I've left the link in the video description below. It'll take you to my Patreon page where you can read through one of three tiers that you can join from five to 15 pounds. It depends on whether you want to just practice your techniques or really develop the technical side of your drawing. So you can kind of join one which suits you best. There's over a hundred tutorials on Patreon that you can choose from that range from wildlife, dogs, cats, and all kind of animal-based colour pencil tutorials.
So it's always been a hobby. I've always loved drawing. So from very, very early on, maybe when I was like 13, 14, around that age, I started drawing my uh, friends' dogs and would just give it to them for free. Um, and then obviously more and more people were like, oh, can I have a portrait? So then I'd start doing more and more. And then around 15, I got an art stall at the entrance of Sainsbury's. I literally took my GCSE work and anything that I've drawn from like years ago. So there was so much random stuff. But I also took some examples of the pet portrait work that I've been doing for friends as well. Um, and I'd also got some business cards made. So everyone that's going in and out of Sainsbury's, which was actually a really good place to be, um, was taking business cards. And from that, I got a commission from like a random woman, which wasn't like friends or family. So that was like a big thing. And I think I charged uh, about 30 or 40 pound for an A4 drawing of a horse. And then I went and dropped it off. Um, and then I started kind of with all my social media platforms like Instagram and my Facebook page. I didn't really have a website at that point. From then, people could obviously message me and I could kind of showcase my work on an online platform. So this was all happening when I was probably around 16, 17, kind of going into college. And then it kind of grew. I, with my social media, obviously, you get exposed to a lot more people. So I had people messaging me asking for commissions and stuff like that. And then you kind of learn as you go in terms of like what packaging you're going to use. And like you can kind of compare yourself to other similar artists in terms of what price you should be charging. I was still charging quite low at that point because I wanted to just build a portfolio to kind of showcase online. So throughout college I was always doing it as like a side hobby um, and then I took that through to uni as well and obviously every single kind of six months or couple of months I was upping my prices each time. So I still did it as like a side thing whilst I was at uni. I did fine art at uni but they weren't obviously the same kind of things um, and obviously with kind of showcasing more and more of my work on social media, the demand grew for commissions and I was able to charge more and more and more. And then I graduated from uni and we kind of went into a lockdown. So I was focusing all my time on doing commissions and then starting to grow other kind of income streams like my Etsy shop. I started kind of dipping into products that I could um, provide for people. So then a secondary thing on top of that, just to kind of break up the commissions a bit, because it's a bit heavy going doing like one after another. Um, so just to split that up a little bit, I started doing um, tutorials, making tutorials, started filming my work um, for Patreon and for YouTube as well. I want to give some free ones out there as well. Um, so I think kind of getting yourself out there as much as possible is a really good thing if you want to grow as an artist. But for those of you that are like very, very early stages, just wanting to start out, I would recommend drawing friends and family's dogs for a very low price or even for free. And then with that, it's a very timely process. It kind of builds up, but you will start getting more and more commissions. And with that, you can kind of keep up in your prices little and often. When I was first starting out, I wish I kind of had tutorials or some kind of guidance um, and help, especially with like the business side of it. and. Also with the drawing side as well, in terms of what materials to use and like developing my techniques, but quicker. So the quality of my drawings were better so I could charge more earlier. So it kind of condenses the time it takes to grow in a way. Um, so I kind of wish I had that guidance when I was starting out. So that's why I started Patreon because I want to kind of share that with people that are starting out. So if you're a beginner in colour pencils or you just want to advance your techniques a little bit, there's so many free tutorials out there on YouTube. If you want to really kind of sharpen your techniques or, you know, get to know an artist on a more personal level that can help you kind of elevate your business, like the business side, um, as well as your techniques and talk you through drawings and help you with your own personal work, then Patreon is obviously a really good place to do that on. Use social media to your advantage, like you can literally expose yourself to thousands and thousands of people, you just need to be consistent with it and post work that you're proud of and don't be scared to post work either. I think some artists are a bit worried to put the work out there but it's a really good thing to do because you get that constant feedback from people and especially with the art community I think it's generally a really positive place to be. Um, so yeah, get your stuff out there and I'm sure you'll get a great reaction. So I think if I was starting again um, with my art business, you know, trying to grow it from, from a beginner to full time, I'd probably firstly 
get myself out there on social media as early as I can on probably as many platforms as I can. Follow like-minded people, people that inspire you and just really soak up all that free content. The second thing would be learn from people that are already doing what you want to be doing because they're a massive inspiration and they can give you advice. Message them, even join like Patreon, like I've said before, because you can kind of get more of that personal relationship with them where they actually care about helping you as an artist to grow in terms of your business and in terms of like the technical drawing side of it as well. To learn from people that are already doing what you want to be doing they might have spent three years to get there, but by offering content and advice through paid platforms like Patreon, by paying for that, it's almost like an investment in yourself. Well, it is an investment in yourself because you're kind of speeding up that process. You're getting all that content and advice that you can use straight away and you're not having to learn that for yourself over time. You can kind of take that and speed up the process of growing your art business. So the third point is to be consistent and be consistent over time. This isn't an overnight process, this is going to take time, but it's better to do something every day than do nothing. Just by doing something, even on the days where you don't feel like it, which is absolutely fine, we, do, we all have them days, it gets you a little step nearer to your end goal. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you've made it to the end, I hope you found what I've talked about helpful and you've got to know me a little bit more as well. If you've got any questions then just comment below if you've enjoyed this video then please like it and if you're not already please subscribe to my channel to see more and i'll see you in the next one